Welcome to Nitpicky Nerds and one of our favorite series, Grading Commander Staples. This time, Gold Staples. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you still daily content. If you're loving that, go to the Patreon where you can support us with your real life dollars, or there's a link in the description where you can buy TCG player cards, go to the site, and then we get a kickback on the order when you check out. How awesome is that? Pretty dang awesome. Today, we're continuing the series. Uh, this is the last like new category we're going to do, but we might do some going back and doing even more staples because there's lots of staples for this format. We're doing gold cards that means cards that are one or two three colors yes the top 30 most played gold identity cards on edh rec we're not choosing these it's just the most played ones we're going to go through and we're going to give them grades we've explained in detail for the first five episodes of this series if you're following along what the grades are but it's basically a auto include b build around c eh, cuttable d don't really bother and f is yes so uh, the lower the grade, the more reason you need to play it. That's the best way to think about this. If something gets enough, there's not, it's not necessarily unplayable, but you definitely need more of a reason to play it. Yeah, and our talks and words about this is going to be more important than the grade. Just a little cherry on top. Yeah, the grade is something. It's a memory point. And uh, not talking about CDH whatsoever. Classic uh, example of this is we give Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast Fs. In CDH, obviously, those are much better. Yeah, and we're not talking about budget either. It is impossible to make this a budget and non-budget list, so we're just not doing that. Budget changes literally everything about how you evaluate a card. Mm -hmm. This episode is definitely going to go by mm -hmm. faster. I think there's really only like 22 cards to talk about. For example, the first six cards, the six most played gold cards on EDH rec, is it Orzov, Demir, Boros, Rakdos, Azorius, Signet. Now, very interesting. None of the green ones. Weird, right? That's good. Uh, actually, that shows me some hope in the EDH community that people are aware that green is really good at ramping and doesn't need signets. These are all Bs. They are uh, they're pillars of usually they're, if you're playing non-green deck that is three colors or two colors, you're throwing these in. It's got a signet in it. And you have artifact synergies, they just get even better. They might be like B pluses in an artifact deck where you care yep. about the type. But these are just your bread and butter. You can't play without two mana rocks. It's just so much worse for you. Yeah. So maybe in your non-green decks, these can be more of an A because you really want these. These these are like some of the first rocks you're throwing and you're throwing your soul ring. And then if you're an is it, you're throwing in your is it signet too. I mean, definitely not an A. They're replaceable. So they're just like a B. They're just really good. Yeah. They're, I mean, yes, they're very good. They're going to, but they're going to make most lists that aren't playing green. Green is, green is a color that just says, get your signets out of here. Yeah, please. We do not need that. Uh, what about number seven? Uh, number seven, the, the seventh most played gold card, which is surprising to me, is Dovin's Veto. Give this a B. Solid counter spell. Counters non-creature spells, but it also can't be countered. So you win the counter war when this comes out. That's a really high percentage. It just came out, I feel like, and it's already way up at the most played spell, basically. Yeah, I mean, for multicolored, I mean, there's not there's not really insane multicolored spells, so it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there's some A's on here, though, I guess, that we would put above it. But a solid B, this card is very good. Yeah, exactly. It's a great counter spell in this. This one, uh, if you want to talk about budget... Good budget card. It's like, what, maybe a dollar? Maybe two at I most? I think it's like between one and two. Maybe like your mid-tier budget. This is like an all-star. Yeah, absolute all-star. Next, we have Anguish of Making, A-. minus. This is such a good removal spell. If you're in black and white, get this in your deck. I mean, the three life is nothing in a 40 life format. So you can just destroy any non-land permanent at instant speed. When you exile it. Exile it, which makes it even better. And it's at instant speed. Great card. It just gets around everything. It's just a premium removal spell. I think the jump between three and four is pretty big, so I'm way more high on this than like Utter End. Yeah, I think I think the jump between three and four is completely huge. But again, I think Utter End is a, is a very replaceable card. This is premium. The, the three mana um, instant speed is huge compared to a four mana instant speed. Every mana matters a ton. Oh, well, and then let's look at the next one. It's Assassin's Trophy. It's destroy any permanent. They get a basic, but it's two mana instant. Ooh. I don't like giving my opponents basics, but I think I come around on it. Come around on it a little bit, because the I, I think what I'm thinking is it's more like modern where every resource counts. And commander, everything is not equal and it doesn't even I just don't even think it matters that much. I'm I'm higher on this than I used to be. The number of games I see where it just they're playing some combo or they're playing some card that is just gonna wreck you by itself, or they're just gonna tutor up cabal coffers. Like, I need the destroy target permanent. 
Yeah. And it's only two mana. Yeah, I gave it a B plus. I'm very high in Assassin's Trophy. I don't think I have a deck it's in, but that's because I don't have a green black deck right now. Yeah, I think it's in my only green black deck. Or my uh competitive Carador deck. Yeah, it's very strong. You just don't care about giving them a land because you're gonna destroy, you know, the Ristic Studies, the the Smothering Tides, the Gaia's Cradles, all these cards. Turns out that giving them a basic land, uh, it's gonna be worth it in the end. Another thing that I maybe like I overlooked it in my head, I just didn't think about it. I don't mind um Song of the Dryads, which turns something into a force. This just turns something into a basic land, right? <laughs> but they can't ever switch it back. Yeah, exactly. It's the exact same. Yeah, maybe that's a good consideration. That's a really good thought um, to have. I never actually thought about those two Me neither. Pieces. I'm like, wait, it just kind of turns it into the basic they get. Yeah, exactly. The only difference is here that you, uh, with Song of the Dryads, you get to lock commanders on the field, and Assassin's Trophy can't do that, but you exchange sorcery speed and cheetah mana. Yeah. And, but Song of the Dryads can be can unlock anything else. Yeah, exactly. When it gets so, destroyed. That's a great point, and that is actually, yeah, I, I really like that thought. That's a good one. Food for thought. Yeah, exactly. Next, we have Talisman of Creativity, which will stand in for all non-green talismans. These are bees. They're just as good as the signets. Maybe a little worse, maybe a little better. Doesn't matter. They're on the same level. Yeah, they can produce mana by themselves. Signets can't. But when you tap them for colored mana, which you don't have to, they deal damage to you. I think it's important. The only thing I'm going to say, add on besides the fact that they're bees, they're amazing. You need them in your non-green decks. I think, what are the green talismans and signets? Like Ds? Uh, they're on here. Don't worry. We're get, there's some green signets on here. We will get to oh, them. Oh, there are? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so we will get to them in a little bit. Uh, but talismans, just put them, you're going to be putting them in all your non green three and two color decks. So there you go. Pretty simple there. Next is Boros Charm. I think this card is a C. It's very cuttable. It just feels like as you um, get access to more cards, that's a fairy. I feel like you don't need one, you don't need too many slots dedicated to saving your team from board wipes. And as you get to Fairy's Protections, Era Interlude for your Blink deck, there's other stuff too. You just end up not needing Boros Charm. It has to, I, I would play it if you need more than one mode, and that is very rare. Like the four damage, that's a standard card design. That's a modern design. That is nothing, virtually nothing for Commander. So if, but there are some decks that care about the like, oh, you deal damage, gain life, or trigger something. Mm -hmm. But you need two of those modes to matter. And the indestructible one, sure, that's not bad. But I would not play that card. You need it to do something else for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other side of Boros Charm, the double strike can matter if your commander is like Voltron. Because like in that case, you can take you, you can take your 11 damage to lethal all of a sudden. Yeah, that that's usually where I, I think it goes. Is commander damage kill on offense or save my butt on defense? Yeah, exactly. So it's a C, it's cuttable. But yeah, it fits in some decks. There's definitely homes for this card. Next, it's another recent card. It's Rhythm of the Wild. We gave it a, right at a C+. Plus. This is going to give your creatures Riot, and your creature spells can't be countered. But it is only non-tokens, so it's a, it's a nice haste enabler when you don't care about tokens. It's just, yeah, it depends on what deck you're playing. I have a big I have a big Gruul Stumper deck. It plays this card. Yeah, it's a C+. Plus. It's cuttable in a lot of situations. Doesn't mean I'm, it doesn't mean it's unplayable. I play it in my Gruul Stumper deck. I love having my creatures not being able to be countered. I think that's huge. Haste is pretty big when you got like a 10-10. Yes, and they're, my creatures are huge. Every single creature I drop is like a six mana dummy. So obviously I want all those six mana dummies to have haste. I mean, that's part of the problem. You can assemble like this two card combo with rhythm plus a fatty, where if you just slam a fatty, it's like this card is not going to do anything for you. But if you give it haste, it does something now. And it's almost like a two for one if they end up killing it because you already got your thing. Yeah, exactly. How much better is Belfire Dragon if it has haste? Yeah, or like Inferno Titan. I, 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 I want to think about the grade that Belfire Dragon would have. With haste. It, I think that's like an A card. That card's insane with haste. It's going to destroy every, someone's creatures. Ever, it's just going to wipe somebody's board. You're going to deal six to them. And then and then the threats, like, the, the threat of going around still exists, but now one guy's board's dead. Oh, that'd be insane. <laughs> What's even weirder about that one <laughs> is I wonder if, not to waste too much time. Yeah. But once you wipe somebody's board, are they going to kill it? No. No, they know you're going somewhere else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, so, Rhythm of the Wild, the haste part is mostly what you want. Sometimes I've put counters on my creatures. Rarely, but sometimes. It's just a nice, versatile thing that I'll take when I don't need haste. Gravy. Gravy. There Absolutely. There's the gravy. boat. There's the gravy boat. We never use that anymore. It's always too far away. Yeah, it's, no, I no. can't. I can't reach There's that. There's a 60-foot gap between us and the wall. Yeah, and that is a really big gravy boat. You have a really long arm. <laughs> <laughs> Both are true. Uh, next, we have Simic Signet. This is exactly what I said. This is a C-. minus. It's the most replaceable, replaceable, replaceable card. And... You just don't need to play this most of the time, but I understand putting it in your deck sometimes. If you 
All right, you want every two mana ramp you could ever have? Sure, put it in. I actually don't even know if you need to go there still. You just got, like, I'm thinking Rampant Growth, Farseek, uh, Nature's Lore. There's Sakura Tribe Elder. Three visits. Uh, emergent Sequence is still, like, gets put okay. to land and play. There's so many. Maybe you don't have to ever touch it. You might be right about that. But I, I put it at C-. minus. Maybe it's a D plus. It's not good. It's I like the C-. minus. The floor is not super low. It's just a yeah. bleh. You, I mean, how many green decks are going to synergize with an extra land versus an artifact? It's like 90% want the extra land. Yeah. There, there are some that want the artifact, though. And when you want the artifact, put that in your deck. But I'm Maybe. just gonna cut. I'm gonna cut this from almost everything else. Next, we have Aldamari's call. It searches for a creature. It's a good tutor. It's a tutor. I mean, tutors are great. It's a B plus. You need the synergies of toolbox. I that's where I want to be. I want to have enough creatures that when I cast this, it can deal with most situations. Yeah, it's an instant too. That that's pretty sweet. There's not a ton of like instant speed tutors. There's like that go to your hand. I can barely even think of any. Yeah, Aldamari's call. There's that. Yeah, one. that that is one. I think that would be probably like a B plus. Yeah. Can you if think of any on this list? Can you think of any other ones? I literally can't. What about Aldamari's call? That's one. B plus? Yeah, that, that's probably B plus. <laughs> Next we have, well, these two go together, and I'm just going to put them together. Putrefy, Mortify. They're the C minus. They will do their job. They will perform fine. I'm going to cut them almost every single time for my deck because I don't have budget. But these cards these cards will perform fine on the budget. I mean, yeah, there's the floor, like I said, is just, you know, it's not that bad. You, you blow up a thing. Exactly. It's like a hero's downfall with some extra targets that it can hit i just you never go in there if you have any sort of card selection i don't even think you need to go there uh they're just not good not as good as the next 11 options yeah there's a lot more there's a lot better removal you just you don't need to like you said you don't need to go there usually if you need to go there hey go for it maybe you're playing a rick and morty deck and you need mortify right, you need in your mortify deck. i yeah. mean that obviously that's a shoe in You can't, there's no replacement for that. Yeah, me and BZ had Mortify in the battle box that we used to do. We don't have that anymore. But we, when we ever cast it, we would say, you're not Morty. <laughs> it's <laughs> real funny. Every single time. <laughs> I mean, you can't not say it. You can't not say it. If you don't, you, you, uh, same thing wasn't roast. You had to make fun of the creature or else you couldn't cast it. Yeah, roast, actually an F in Commander though. It is an F in Commander. Well, you, Bonus grade. That was free. Join the Patreon. Uh, yeah, roast it, go boom, roast it, and yes. then move on. All right, <laughs> next is another green signet. It's Golgari signet. We just went over this. It's a C minus. Meh. You know, it's very, like begrudgingly playable. Or if you have nothing better to do, yeah, you could play it. Exactly. Uh, then we have Talisman of Hierarchy, Conviction, and Dominance. So let's say all these now. They were they go with the other ones. They're all Bs. They're good. They're just rock solid, definitely. I mean, non-green is the only thing you're looking for. Once it's a two-mana rock and it's not green, you're in. Uh, next we have D-Spark. B minus. This card is in EDH, in not CEDH. Like, if you just, like, let's just, if CEDH doesn't exist and EDH only exists, oh my God, this card's insane. I mean, we're not looking at CEDH. So. Yeah, I know. But that's what I'm saying. So this card's a B minus. This card is two mana exile, usually the biggest threat on the board. Sometimes there's a Rhystic study in, like, it's our new study. Yeah, you just can't get it. You know, all the broken cards they keep printing that are one, two, and three mana, it's not going to hit those. But, any, it, like it's always a mana advantage because it kind of has to be. I just love the efficiency of this card. It's two mana. It's it's way easier to hold up two than even three, but it's more narrow than Anguish I'm Making. So we still like Anguish I'm Making better, but D-Spark is like right below it. Yeah, it's much more narrow than... I think it's it's like there's a big gap of narrowness here, but it's still good. Um, and both of those blow Mortify out of the water. Yeah, not even close. I'm not... Don't touch Mortify. They exile and they're the same cost. I know. <laughs> they hit so, more things. Yeah, so B- minus for D-Spark, solid card. Next you have Ghost Spiral. I gave it a B-. minus. Green ramps really well, but... If you need extra land drops in your deck, Grow Spiral is thumbs up great. Yeah, this card got banned in standard. The, I don't like that's so weird. They, instant speed. It's <laughs> the common. They explore. Just, it just didn't. It's too much. It's just too much on this card. It ends up being totally fine in Commander. This card I think is one that gets played too much, but that's not a testament to how. That's not mean. That doesn't mean the card's worse. It just means, hey. I don't think every deck needs a growth spiral. I think the, I literally think the places you don't play it in your average green, your blue green deck, your average one. Just shove it in. But when you want exactly, I think landfalls where it matters. If sure. you need extra land drops, you want to put extra land in play. Maybe you have a high velocity of card draw, where putting okay. extra land in play will help you. Tetiova AC nonsense. Exactly that kind of stuff. That's where you want to have have it. But other than that, no. But well, what I noticed is this card gets played a lot, but Explore, like the exact same thing, doesn't. So if you're not playing Explore. 
probably don't want growth spiral. Just that, maybe that's like a little bit of a That's a great way to think about heuristic. it. You either want both or you want neither. There's almost never going to be a situation where you just want one of them. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Merciless Eviction C-. Um, it's this Again, the floor on this card, pretty good. Exile all creatures. Uh, exile all creatures, you can just do better. That's all there is to it. There's so many great, amazing, and strong board wipes. If, there, if you're in some sort of meta where uh, the exile is incredibly relevant, sure, now I can see this, but eh, overall, C-. minus. Yeah, I think if you, even if you care about getting them somewhere other than the graveyard, you know, there's like Terminus and... Uh, hollow burial and I think there's a like a Kamigawa one that does the same thing I, I the the floor is also kind of the ceiling for me I feel like it's only exile all creatures it's just kind of, like the versatility is there but I feel like you can almost just never uh, do it that's fair yeah um, you, you don't want to be casting six mana exile all artifacts that's a bad card that's not a good card and so, I mean having it on the card doesn't make it worse believe no. me but it makes it better but Overall, I'm not interested, and I've never put this in the deck, and I don't think I will. Yeah. Uh, the next one is one of my favorite cards ever, because who doesn't like Deathrite Shaman? We just got this rock solid A. I would say that you need fetch lands to make this work, but I don't even think that's true. I just don't even... I You can self-mill, or have other people self-mill, or if other people play fetch lands, that's not you. And there's like 10 budget reasonable fetch lands or cycling lands or anything that just works with this so well. This card is amazing. And even if it's not a mana dork producing rainbow colors, it could just deal six damage for a black mana. You know, two, two, two. Yeah, and it'll, oh. it'll always do that. This card is super solid. Again, it's just a slow little drain to your opponent. Sometimes they can gain you life. That's gravy on top of the Death Rite Shaman. It's just the it's the one of it's the best mana dork ever printed. It's insane. You just need to do a little bit of building around it, but even then, even if you don't build around it too much, it's still probably going to perform fine for you. Yeah, they pushed this thing to the moon when they printed it, and it's a mistake, and we'll take advantage of it because it's not broken. It's just really good. Yeah, it's a funny card because, like, the, on paper, this card does not look broken. And when it was printed, people were not all over it. It took, a, it took like, a week or two. Like, when it was spoiled, people were not going crazy about it. Then I remember, like, people were like, yeah, this is thing playing modern. Like, oh, really? Yeah, banned in Legacy. Yeah, banned in Legacy. Banned in Modern. You know, it's a pretty good card. Pretty good. Uh, all right. Next is Terminate, and I'm going to lump it in with Utter End, too, because this is just the classic Terminate to see. You know, it's totally okay, especially in budget. It's just not the best thing you can do in almost any deck. And we kind of had a short that came out. We looked at it, and we said, well, what are here's all these cards that are better, and some of them are only better in certain situations. But then what's left afterwards? You just don't ever have to play Terminate, I think. And Utter End, C-, minus. it's worse than the two cards we just mentioned. How many slots do you need? It's kind of clunky at four mana. Yeah, Terminate, I think, might maybe I could, I'll be nice. I'll see Terminate might be close to a C plus, but it's still a C. It's still cuttable in almost all situations. I have never played it, and I've never really felt the want or need to play it. It's, my black decks have such good removal. We've been pretty impressed with Baleful Mastery. Uh, which one's Baleful Mastery? Yes, I love that card. I think that card's awesome. I think the political value of that card is absolutely just takes it. It is one in Exiles. So, so it's one and a black, exile a creature, somebody draws a card. Somebody, not you, but you choose. There is so much political value to be gained. You can give the guy who you exiled their thing uh, the card and say, hey, no hard feelings. Or you can go, okay, he stole the arch enemy, guys. You have the card. Please help me. Yeah, I just saw that in Commander Cube. It was really good. Yeah, I love that about this card. I think it's an absolutely, like, great, like, alternative. Just replace that one for one with your Terminate and see, see how uh, much more you can do with it. Up next is Supreme Verdict. This is a B. And what I like about Supreme Verdict is not being able to be countered. That can be super relevant in a lot of situations. Is it the only board wipe that can't be countered? I think so, yeah. It's basically one of the... I mean, it's either the only one or, like, one of the only three. This is good. I think it's another one that's, like, overplayed. Just because you're blue-white doesn't mean you want this. There might be other board wipes that synergize better. If you're, like, a control deck, oh, yeah. This is oh, a very, yeah. very much you want to play this in your control decks. This is just... It's a very solid format of board wipe for your blue-white decks. You don't need it in every single one of your blue-white decks, like BZ's saying, because sometimes you're going to be, like, very creature-heavy. Some... You'd still just rather have, like, Tragic Arrogance or Austere Command or something. What if you're a blue-white blink deck? I'm not touching this. I don't want to wipe creatures. That's not what I'm looking to do. Yeah, exactly. Just be careful. If you're, like, a creature-based deck, mm -mm. Spring Bird is not doing much for you. Control deck, creature light deck, or some kind of deck with some indestructible thing. Yeah, this card's I great. I think that other, 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 wow, other than damn... This is the best four mana wipe. I can agree with that. Uh, yeah. Next, it's two more signets. 
I mean, we've said a grill signet and Celestine signet. They're green. They're green. They're kind of poopy. They're the poopiest signet. Try not to play them. C minus. And the last, the last card, card that gets played a ton but just never by us is Mirari's Wake. The reason I give it a B minus is because of the overplayed nature. I love well, uh, something I like to express with the grades in this video is if it's an overplayed card, I tend to give it a little lower. Mirari's Wake will play like a B plus in the right deck. The problem is people don't put it in the right deck. People just put uh, it in decks. You need to make sure that when you untap with this Mirari's Wake, because you do have to untap with it most of the time, or you have whatever extra mana you're going to be producing, you need to be able to use it. And so a lot of decks can't do that, and a lot of people put it in the right decks. But some people put it in the deck, and then they waste like 10 mana. It's like, well, that's not a good card in your deck. That's, no, not, yeah. a, that's not a useful card. All of the mana doublers, you need mana sinks or some kind of mm -hmm. X spell. You know, X spells count, activated abilities count, your commander counts like Zakama is going to love these every mm -hmm. time. I mean, that card's going to go infinite with like a Mirari's Wake half the time. You need to wait to spend the mana. Exactly. That's all you need. You just need to make sure use the mana. Use it, use it, use it, and this card will be a, it'll perform sometimes like an A. Yeah. It can literally perform that well because it's a great magic card. The overplayed nature of it, of people just throwing in their decks, then spewing out their hand, and then the next turn they can untap with it again, and all of a sudden they have nothing to do. Yeah, and, and even in a situation where... I think this isn't as impressive as some people think. There are situations where you play it, then you untap with it, then you use it for a whole turn, and then it dies somewhere along the line. And I just think you're not even getting your value then. Uh, like, so if you have five mana and you play Mirari's Wake, and you untap and you play six, now you tap 12, but five of it just paid back your Mirari's Wake, so you got one. You, well, you got so two. That, you got one. Okay, you're right. You got so one. that's just like, whoa. to me, that doesn't sound very good. So I want to like really take advantage of it. Yeah, exactly. Like if you have, like, it's gonna be worth it to do it and like only go up technically one mana. But if you cast an Ulamog, that's gonna feel really good. Like if you have lots of big yeah. spells like that, it's gonna feel great. Yes, uh, and that's the list. Yeah, that's all of the gold cards. Uh, that was a. Li it's a little light of a list because there's a lot of ten of them were signets and talismans. I more of them. I think all of the green ones were on there. So that was ten of the so signets. Like Fourteen. And so 14 of them, that's a lot. Um, but obviously this list is a little shorter, but we'll come back around to this and probably talk about these some more again. Probably going to go back to, what's first? White. Some more white cards. It'd be 31st staple through 60th staple. Which, I mean, those are still very good cards. If they you, were very played. That's we, why We missed a lot. Exactly, yeah. So that is our video. Special shout-outs to all of our patrons. Love you guys all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Appreciate every ounce of support that you guys give us. You're the lifeblood of this channel. Seriously, it's the best. I, I love being able to do YouTube as a full career now. We just hit my first weekend where I would have had to work, and instead I got to have fun and work on YouTube the whole time. Uh, it was amazing. You can also support the channel by going to the link in the description. TCG Player is where you're going. Buy the cards you were going to buy anyway. Now, when you cash out, we get a kickback on the order, but you don't spend any extra money. It is the best possible thing for you and me. Yes, it is really awesome. Thank you for supporting us in any way that you do. If you just watch this video, thank you for that support. If you subscribe, thank you for that support. All the support you give us, thank you. Yes. Tidbit, it is definitely your turn. Oh, uh, it's my turn? 100%. Well, we got to play the Commander Cube for the entire day yesterday. We played it from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. So we did three full drafts and had a pizza break. And it was amazing. We got a ton of, like data and testing in and the more we play the cube the better it gets. the less there's wrong with it every time there was we looked at there was like five cards we wanted to look at because they were either too good or too bad that's like the lowest yet yeah oh my god it was so it's so cool we're just discovering what's wrong like uh we were we were we put in some of the gods just to test them indestructible they're too good i turns mean turns out every one of them no matter what they say <laughs> yeah afara i just created i just went i had a, a yorian resto loop so every single upkeep, I was drawing a card. It's like, that's pretty strong. Yeah, and the resto, or the, which one was it? The resto, like, wasn't even in play. The resto would always be exiled and come back at the next end stop. Yeah, very goofy. It was very, very, very strong. And I, I re, the worst thing is you killed half of it, and I recreated it with a... With a Charming Prince. With Charming Prince. It did the exact same thing. Yeah, it's like, well, Farah, okay, get out of here. The Yorian loop is one thing. And then there was a perplexing test bouncing Archaeomancer. Yeah. That's a little miserable. We have, like... Two or three archaeomancer esque effects. So yeah, we had to get perplexing test out. That's, it, that's gonna get replaced with like a sorcery or some targeted bounce or something. That card has been insane. So yeah, I think cutting it like it has been. I've seen it be just. I wrecked your life by bouncing yeah. your like eight tokens. With I it. did that too. In when I was playing the storm deck and I did it. Oh really? It was, what did you do? You were in that game. 
Remember, I was playing you this were storm. What I did storm. You I bounced tokens. Yeah, and I just left all my creatures on the board and got rid of all the annoying things. Yep, it was like sweet. it was like oh, that card's really good. We end up cutting Mystic's mastery from it. Yeah, uh, wins- storm doesn't need to lean on it as a crutch, and the card's completely busted. It's, I mean, it won every time. It just wins by itself. It's not even what we're trying to do. It's like okay, well, you let the game go this long, and then no, we're not interested in that. Exactly. So that's the end of our video, though. And thanks for watching. Peace out, Tribe Scout. <laughs>